Look at this freaking picture. This is truly one of the most disturbing and gripping images you will see all year from the WWE. And it's absolutely beautiful. This is a beautiful image to me. Why? Because Randy Orton has come back. Randy Orton is back from a place of despair. Randy Orton has returned to the dark side. And the Viper, with a venomous and absolutely vicious attack on the charismatic Enigma. And we are going to talk about it all right here and right now on the newest Fastest Rising podcast in all of YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and Podbean, baby. It's the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Hide your earlobes before Randy Orton fingers them. (laughs) Let's do it. Wrestling fans, thank you so much for joining me and welcome as this week we kick off the Sledgehammer TV Subber Slam subscriber drive to 1K and beyond. If this is your first time viewing us, do not forget to help us achieve that goal of getting to 1,000 subscribers and more. You would screw 1,000. Let's go for 10. Let's go for 100. Let's get as many people on board as we absolutely can have on board. It's the Subber Slam subscriber drive don't worry about the lamest party of the summer summer slam ain't gonna be shit compared to our summer slam extravaganza all summer long leading to summer slam weekend and in commemoration of this fantastic time for all of you guys to jump on board and be a part of the sledgehammer club we are bringing back the t-shirt with a new friend for all of you guys that picked up the sledgehammer club t-shirt during the wrestlemania promotion we have a second choice we have one of two choices for you guys to show your support and your love for the greatest wrestling show on the planet Be a member of the Sledgehammer Club, get your black and white armor and don it proudly, or the all-new Sledgehammer Wrestling Show t-shirt. Support the show directly. Don't worry about being a part of the club if you're not a big Bullet Club guy and you just want to show support and your love for the show, or maybe you enjoy my logo a lot more than you enjoy the Bullet Club's logo. Whatever the reason is that you choose to pick either one of these t-shirts, To join the Sledgehammer Club today, now available until SummerSlam festivities have concluded here in New York City, you can go to teespring.com slash sledgehammertv or click the link in the description box below as we bring to you the true biggest party of the summer happening right here on Sledgehammer TV. Thank you guys for indulging me in all of my stuff pre-show. Not the usual warm-up that we do, not the usual open. Hey yo, and what is up, gang? My name is Nick Nightmare. Thank you guys for checking out the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's SmackDown Live Review. Coming to us from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, my brother and his family were in attendance, and he is a lucky guy. He is a lucky guy. He's always had a lot better luck than me, just on, on the average in life all the way around. But be that as it may, he got to see a good SmackDown tonight. Now, let's not get carried away. This was not the greatest thing since the 1992 Royal Rumble or anything like that. Let's not get carried away. But when you want to take into consideration the five hours of trash that we got at Extreme Rules, and then you give us three more hours of predictable and just absolutely nonsensical garbage from Monday Night Raw as you're booking things over there as if you don't even have fans and the one and only fan that matters is Vince McMahon. It's like Vince McMahon's personal play box. He's just going to do whatever he wants and he doesn't care that he literally has the attention 
of billions of people worldwide. He's just going to do what he wants with his balls, remember? But tonight, we're not talking about Vince McMahon's balls. We're talking about SmackDown Live and the very decent show that they gave to us right from the onset. We had a very quick and easy open. Jeff Hardy came out. He says... He looks like Jeff Hardy, but he doesn't feel like Jeff Hardy. And and Shinsuke Nakamura, he's going to take care of him. He's going to make him fade away, classify him as obsolete. And I thought we were going to start the show with that match, but instead that was announced as the main event for the evening. We went to Renee Young, who had an interview with Shinsuke Nakamura, where he called Jeff Hardy a sad clown. One of my favorite things Shinsuke Nakamura has ever said. And he mocked him. And just making fun of him and said he's going to make him cry once again, just like he did at Extreme Rules. I'm into this. I'm definitely into this. I absolutely love the villainous Shinskevil Nakamura. It's definitely way better than that cookie-cutter bullshit babyface garbage that they're making so many other people force to do. But when they were doing it with Shinsuke, I liked it. I didn't really think it was that bad. I still hate this theme song. And my hate for Nakamura's theme song comes only due to the fact, and I am going to say it until the whole damn world hears me, this song sounds like it was written by Parappa the Rapper, a uh, 1999 or early 2000s PlayStation video game comes straight out of the wacko minds from Sony and the guys in Japan over there. If you're not familiar with the game... Go look it up on YouTube. I'm sure you will find some sort of a video to it. Listen to this song, whichever one it is, I'm sure it'll be just fine. But the one in particular is the one that features Chop Chop Master Onion. Right, Fans of the game will know what I'm talking about. I feel like Chop Chop Master Onion is the lead vocalist on the track for Shinsuke Nakamura's evil Japanese hip-hop remix of one of the coolest songs the WWE's ever produced. But... Parappa the Rapper aside, Shinsuke Nakamura tonight with Jeff Hardy in the main event did not disappoint. What did disappoint was the WWE. There's always a reason to bring the hammer down. That's why I'm still here. Just because we had a decent show doesn't mean we can't hammer down on a couple of things. And like we always do, it's a broken record point that we keep bringing up. But the commercial placement in this show is absolutely ridiculous. Right from the get-go, you have a first-ever confrontation with Andrade Cien Almas going up against the World Heavyweight Champion AJ Styles. And you went to commercial. Twice during that match. You did the same thing during the main event. 30 minutes for Jeff Hardy, one of your biggest stars on the roster, versus Shinsuke Nakamura, the current United States champion, in a big-time championship rematch. And you keep going to commercial. It's hard for fans at home to get invested. I'm sure my brother and his family in the crowd were definitely enjoying the show to its fullest because those were some very, very high-quality matchups. But They book-ended the show with great wrestling. And then they wanted to bring the whole entire show to an end with Randy Orton's return in a very, very evil manner. There is no question now. Everybody following Extreme Rules was like, oh, well, is Randy Orton turned or not? You can't ask that question anymore tonight. Randy Orton is back. He delivered an ear KO, and I was saying RK, ouch, all over my couch. I could barely even watch it. Seeing Randy Orton have his way with Jeff Hardy's earlobe, I felt like I should have called Mariska Hagate and the guys from CSI. Somebody get in there and Law Law and Order SVU or whatever it is. They're all the same fucking show anyway. Call whoever you want. Call the redhead. Call the guy with the glasses and the beard or the other guy. Who cares? I don't know the cast. I'm not that familiar with all of them. I do know that that's who you got to call if somebody ever puts their finger in your ear like that. Very inappropriate looking, very painful looking, very uncomfortable as we showcased you guys at the beginning of the show with that imagery. Absolutely unbelievable and absolutely fantastic beginning and end to this show. Most of my problems with this show happen all the way through the middle because as soon as it came to Becky Lynch... 
you know, the show is good. You know, even Aiden English, I'll, I'll give credit where credit's due. Aiden English and Lana in the back. We didn't see Rusev tonight. We didn't see Asuka tonight. Thank God we didn't see Kane tonight. And I'm okay with that because obviously we have to reset these programs and see where the hell we're going to go. Hopefully they reset Kane to the retirement home and just let him play mayor. And don't come back no more. We don't need you, Jack, so hit the road. Right, but as far as Rusev and Asuka are concerned, we need to figure out how to turn this shit around for Asuka. And Rusev is still going to be Rusev. He's over his rover. And Aiden English had, had nothing but apologies for Lana. And Lana's standing there in her Lana Day shirt. She should be wearing a Rusev Day shirt. We're not going to go back into that right now. But she's she's apparently the mediator for Rusev again. Or she's his manager of some sort. And... Aiden English is apologizing to her. He wants to make it up to Rusev. He's been there for Rusev. He's had Rusev's back the whole time. And he wants to prove himself worthy again. And Lana's just not convinced that he's worth anything to Rusev at this point. And I was alright with it. This came after the fantastic Andrade C and Almas and... AJ Styles match. This was a great match for what I was able to see. I hope, I wish they didn't go to commercial as much as they did, but almost controlled a lot of this match. He proved to the world that he is a top tier talent. You do not go nearly 15 minutes with AJ Styles, almost win this thing on multiple occasions with lots of close near falls. An absolutely fantastic showcase for him, showing his talent and proving to the whole entire world that, hey, I'm here and I could wrestle the champ and I could give you a better match than anything else you've seen all weekend long, which is the truth. Probably the best match from the WWE all week. It should have been given at least another five minutes. My only complaint here is I don't understand why Andrade Cien Almas had to lose in such a fashion. Why didn't he get frustrated, maybe get himself disqualified, maybe Zelina Vega gets herself involved and gets the match thrown out. Why they had to pin his shoulders to the mat, even though this is AJ Styles, the World Heavyweight Champion, I understand that, but you're trying to build a future for Andrade Cien Almas. Does it really hurt that much for him to lose not really being that we're just at the beginning and hopefully this is a launch point for him to go much much further very quickly and accelerate his track to the top but i don't have faith in the wwe to truly do that it'll be interesting to see where this thing goes from here but i'm very proud of andrade cn almost tonight AJ Styles again giving us a quality, quality matchup. And I was tranquilo myself after this. Like I said, we had Becky Lynch come out. And I was still good until Mandy Rose came out. And then this show started to take a little bit of a downhill turn. Maybe not so much of a little bit as it pretty much took a dive straight down into the depths because Mandy Rose's new song, I mean, they keep changing this girl's song. They're just tweaking it ever so slightly that you could barely even tell the difference. But at the end of the day, it still sounds like a really bad 90s Skinamax porn flick opening title credit sequence song to which I guess maybe is fitting for her character, being that she looks like the quintessential porn star. But I'm not watching WWE to watch porn stars. If I want to watch porn, I'll go to Brazzers or I'll go to Pornhub like everybody else in the world. I want to watch wrestling. I don't want to see this awkward entrance. And she comes out trying to be uber sexy. And she's just coming off as lame. Doesn't matter how beautiful you are. If you look like a lame duck and you walk like a lame duck, chances are even in the sack you're a lame duck. And I'm not going to take that chance with Mandy Rose, especially when it comes to her wrestling ability. I will admit that she looks like she's kind of maybe improving. She's not as spotty and as sloppy as she was, but it's still there. She's definitely nowhere near the level of a Becky Lynch and why she's being booked in a match versus Becky Lynch again, like we haven't seen this already a couple of weeks ago. And of course, she has to have her running buddy, Sonya Deville, with her on the outside. It's just more of the same shit that we've been seeing week in and week out at the end of the day. However, Becky Lynch continues her momentum and to continue to gain this rise that she's on Constantly winning week in and week out. You cannot deny that her momentum is at its peak right now. 
And I think she realized that. After the match tonight, she took to the microphone and she says she's been sitting back waiting in the wings and she's been very patient. But perhaps the time has come for Becky Lynch to once again become the SmackDown Live Women's Champion. She then pandered to the crowd. They probably should have popped a lot harder than they did. I don't know why they weren't cheering through the roof for the possibility of anybody other than Carmella to be the SmackDown Live Women's Champion. The match doesn't matter. Becky Lynch easily vanquished. Mandy Rose, nothing special here. After the match in the back, Paige was in the back watching TV, you know, much like Kurt Angle does, and Carmella was there. And immediately I wanted to throw up. Carmella said some shit about beating Asuka again, and then Paige was like, oh, where's your little boyfriend? Kamala's like, ew, he's not my boyfriend. Who cares about all this fucking shit? I didn't care about any of this. And Carmella wants another melibration, as if the first one wasn't nauseating enough. And then Paige is like, yeah, I'll give you a melibration only if you defeat Becky Lynch next week. And... Carmella was not happy about this, and she says she'll face her, but she's not getting a shot, and she will not defend her match against her. And Paige was like, fine, that's fine, but if Becky Lynch beats you, I reiterate, in this non-title match, you will be defending your title against the last kicker at SummerSlam. So that's what's happening, everybody. Expect this week for Becky Lynch, next week, rather, for Becky Lynch to win or get screwed over in some way where Paige will just eventually make this the match for the Women's Championship at SummerSlam. Get it off the Staten Island dump. I want it off of this walking piece of trash. She's done nothing but ruin the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. She has ruined Asuka. One woman. The creative team took one woman and put her above the entire division, put her above the longest reigning NXT Women's Champion of all time, probably the single best female wrestler you have in your employ, and you gave her and fed her to Carmella. And I'm not supposed to bring the hammer down on that. I'm not supposed to be pissed off about that. Like I said, I would much rather not see Asuka at all than see her have anything more to do with the human worm, James Ellsworth, and Miss Staten Island Trash, Mella is garbage. (sighs) Then we have R-Truth come out of fucking nowhere. Literally, R-Truth came out of nowhere more than Randy Orton comes out of nowhere with an RKO. I don't know why he's even still employed. I don't know what he's doing in the back. I forgot he was even around. And he's going to come out and talk to Ty Dillinger. Like, they have anything to do with one another. Ty Dillinger is standing in the back and he's seemingly agitated. Why is he agitated? Because Samoa Joe apparently beat him up before his dark match before last week's SmackDown Live. We didn't see any of that. We definitely should have, but we didn't. Instead, we got last week's terrible episode of SmackDown Live minus Samoa Joe. I want to give them a little bit of credit here for actually trying to do something with Ty Dillinger. Ty Dillinger apparently wasn't interested in a pep talk after the attack from Samoa Joe last week. Truth was able to get Dillinger pumped for the match. That's what this says here, but actually, he was not. He was very sarcastic in his reaction to R-Truth, and it looks as if maybe Ty Dillinger is getting a little bit of an attitude... Maybe there's something brewing underneath him. Maybe he's getting tired of losing. Maybe the WWE is realizing that they need more bad guys. They're not going to give Ty Dillinger a main event run as a babyface and give him any championships. Why not go heel with Ty Dillinger? You're not turning anybody else. You might as well do it. You might as well do it. Now we can have Randy Orton. We can have Shinsuke Nakamura, Samoa Joe, Ty Dillinger, all playing very good heel roles. I think Ty Dillinger will be just fine. And I was actually interested in this match. Samoa Joe would very easily defeat Ty Dillinger. Dillinger gave it his best shot. He jumped Joe before the match. They brawled all over the place, but it wouldn't make a difference. Joe locked in the Coquina clutch before you could count to 10. It it actually wasn't that quick. I'm exaggerating. But um, you get the point. 10. I'm just trying to be funny. And, um, And that was it. Samoa Joe 
standing in the ring like a savage beast and why he is not going to be the one inserted next in line for AJ's championship. I don't know. It is a little bit too soon, I think, to continue with Andrade and maybe give him a rematch, but he has made his stamp on the division and he has made his presence felt, and now is the time to establish AJ Styles as a more dominant champion once again. Get him in there with Joe. You want to give me AJ versus Joe at the Barclays for the World Heavyweight Championship at SummerSlam this year? That's a SummerSlam match. I'd be all for that. You know what's not a SummerSlam match? The Miz versus Daniel Bryan. That is way bigger than SummerSlam. SummerSlam considered the number two pay-per-view by most. That's fine. It's the summer version of WrestleMania, whatever you want to call it. The biggest party of the summer is nothing in comparison to WrestleMania, at least to most of us fans from my generation. And that match screams WrestleMania. The same way Styles versus Nakamura before we had it ruined over the last few months seemed to somebody with a wrestling brain that that was a main event level match for a WrestleMania. The Miz and Daniel Bryan, there is just something magical about them. So much so that when The Miz came out for this eulogy, as much as it was aggravating me, I could not wait to hear what the hell he was going to say. I was fearful more than anything, that Kane was going to be in that casket and he was going to be part of this segment, but thankfully, he was not. His foot was broken. It would have been stupid to have him come out and be walking around. It was stupid enough to have him in the match at Extreme Rules with the foot all booted up, looking like a big red idiot. So I was happy that he was not involved in this special funeral for Team Hell No. I thought this went on way too long. I would have very easily swapped out five minutes of this Miz bullshit for another five minutes for Cien Almas and AJ Styles. Or give another five minutes to Joe and Dillinger. And let them really try to tell some type of a story if you're if that's the way you're going with it. Way too much bullshit here. We had to listen to The Miz talk about how he was MVP during the All-Star Game celebrity game this weekend. Like anybody in wrestling gives a shit about baseball. We had to listen to him pop and uh, pump, rather, pump up his stupid TV reality show. I shouldn't call it stupid. Why am I being so mean? I like The Miz. I just don't want all this being pushed down my throat while I'm trying to watch wrestling. The Miz usually is very good, and he did get to the point that I expected as he finally started to have the actual special funeral and stopped talking about himself and everything he had going on. He was quoting the Miz's... The Miz was quoting Kane's favorite band, In Sync, the most useless reference in all of WWE for the entire year of 2018. He said it was time to say bye-bye-bye to Team Hell No. He started to talk about the friendship and the feud. He wanted the whole crowd to stand for a moment of silence. But of course the crowd's not going to play along. He did the my hand holds up. Your mouth goes shut. And then next thing you know... Daniel Bryan is coming out to stop the whole thing. Because The Miz says Daniel Bryan's return from injury was a failure. Every time he comes out, he's tarnishing his legacy. And he was running down Daniel Bryan once again. There is just magic when these guys start talking about each other. And they start getting at each other in a semi kayfabe way. It's just magical. And I love it. And I was starting to feel that buzz for it. But I think it's a little too soon. SummerSlam is only a couple of weeks away. This is a feud that can be built over the course of a long amount of time. This, a lot of this decision is got to be held on uh, the fact that Daniel Bryan has not, he has not re-signed with the WWE. Don't believe everything you read on the internet, kids. Nothing is finalized yet. We still have to get through the summer. When it's announced, you will know they are going to scream it from the mountaintops. It's not going to have to be some dirt you're going to have to dig out for yourself. It's going to be known widely and proudly, or he will be endeavored. And either way, it's going to be one of the most hottest topics talked about throughout the entire world of professional wrestling. So everybody calm down. And this happening at SummerSlam is a clear example that that is, is a fact. Because this is much bigger than a SummerSlam. They do have the possibility of running this angle at SummerSlam, ending it in a 
somewhat of a cliffhanger way and then revisiting it once Daniel Bryan signs his name to the bottom line and then we could have this go and finally finish off at WrestleMania 35 in New York uh, coming up this April. And I think that's the much better route to go with it. Finishing this up and getting to it already and getting to it by SummerSlam, I think it's much too quick and these two guys deserve more than that. They're actually made for this feud. That's why it was such a big thing on Talking Smack, what, two years ago now? Everybody wants to see it, including me. But I, we've waited this long. I think we could all wait just a little bit more. We go back to the back. And Xavier Woods and the New Day are sitting back there with their pancakes and their nonsense. <laughs> they were pretty funny, though. He said there was nothing sanit... Uh, how did he say it? There... Sanity, more like unsanitized or some shit. And then um, they were pretty much just doing their New Day thing. I, for- I forgot exactly what the guy said, but it was uh, it was amusing as they were leading up to this one-on-one encounter between Eric Young and Kofi Kingston, which was the upcoming matchup following this Miz segment. And it was very good. I could take matchups like this All year long. It builds towards the overall story of the New Day versus Sanity. Which I guess was kicked off with a table match. But that's not usually how we usually do things. But this one-on-one match was a clear example of how good Eric Young is. Kofi Kingston, there is no disputing how great he is. He's been around for over a decade for a reason. Eric Young has only gotten his, his feet wet in the WWE main roster just for the first couple of weeks or so. Last couple of weeks or so. And this is a great showing for him. I thought he looked fantastic. A lot of back and forth action, but this was very, very vicious. He hits hard. He hits strong. Very, very telling of the Sanity style, that craziness in them. And, of course, Sanity would have to play a part in the finish as Killian Dane would distract Kofi Kingston. The New Day would be rendered obsolete on the outside. And then (coughs) Eric Young would get the win over Kofi Kingston. A very good match. Can't complain. And then we got to the United States Championship matchup. Once again, like I reiterate from the start of the show, this was a very good match between two fantastic wrestlers. They were telling a great story. It was a lot of back and forth. It was a lot more than I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be much quicker. I guess they are not really making too much of Jeff Hardy's injuries as his his schedule seems to be just fine as he's going to now be in a program with Randy Orton. We don't know how long he'll be off TV to sell this ear-ripping injury, if that's even going to be a thing. But the matchup between Jeff Hardy and Shinsuke Nakamura was was very, very good. I was enjoying it. And then the whisper in the wind leading to the Swan Tom bomb and the inevitable winning for Jeff Hardy and the returning of the United States Championship to him was foiled by an off-screen Randy Orton. We didn't see him at home. All of a sudden we heard cheering and whipped out of the ring like Randy Orton was an actual viper. Just wrapped his hands around the legs of Jeff Hardy, wrenched him from the ring, and beat the living tar out of the Enigma. And Shinsuke Nakamura just standing there holding on to his United States Championship because he knew he was about to lose it. And he has no idea why Randy Orton has apparently lost it and is beaten down on Jeff Hardy, getting all in on him. You know what I'm saying? Randy Orton would take a minute and tell Jeff Hardy, you want to know why I'm doing this? Huh? You want to know why I'm attacking you? Because you're going to have to wait to find out. Continues to ram him around on the steps, gave him a really vicious beat down, and ended it all by hitting him with a draping DDT off of the announce table to the floor. Randy Orton seething with emotion and just piss and vinegar and venom. Venom of a viper. Waiting to strike once again on Jeff Hardy. Next week, we will have some sort of a huge announcement by Paige. We're probably going to get AJ Styles' next challenger for 
SummerSlam. I'm terrified of what that's going to be. We are going to have Carmella taking on Becky Lynch in a non-title match. And if Becky Lynch, win Lynch wins, she will get a championship opportunity at SummerSlam in the Barclays. August 19th, I think it is. And that was SmackDown Live tonight, you guys. It was, to be fair, entertaining. It was wrestling. It was way better. Way leaps and bounds better than what we got from Raw. What we got from Extreme Rules this week. What we've gotten from both brands for the last month have not been as good as what we got tonight on a SmackDown Live. A SmackDown Live that didn't feature Asuka, like we said. We didn't see any Kane, thank God. But it goes to show you that they can put on a good show. We had two great singles matchups tonight. I can't really complain too much. It's just the usual, man. The, the overexposure of the commercial breaks and the placement of them is horrendous. The way they decide to use Carmella, there's just no way to use her positively. The only good use of Carmella is going to be when she loses that title, no matter who it's going to be to. Now we're just going to have to wait for SummerSlam for the moment to actually happen. SmackDown Live, all in all, not bad. Not bad. It wasn't fantastic, but it wasn't bang my head with this sledgehammer crazy, and I can always appreciate that. I don't expect the trend to continue. I don't expect it at all. And neither should you. I have no faith in them to keep any momentum going. As the drive and the build towards SummerSlam has begun in a little bit of an underwhelming fashion. But the SummerSlam party has just begun. Do not forget, if you are new to the channel and you are still with us at the end of this review, you obviously had a good time. You enjoyed SmackDown Live tonight. I know you enjoyed this show as well, so smash that thumbs up. Take your sledgehammers at home and hit it nice and hard. Make sure the whole entire world knows that you enjoy the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show and everything that we do here on Sledgehammer TV. Share this video with each and every one of your wrestling friends all over the wrestling world. And don't forget, most importantly, the whole point of the SummerSlam drive to 1K and beyond. Hit that motherfucking subscribe button right now. Let's get it kicked off with a nice big jump starting this week, leading into SummerSlam. Let's see how high we can get this channel to before the lamest party of the summer kicks off at the Barclays. Thank you guys, as always, for being a part of this show. All of my new subs from this weekend, welcome to the show. Do not forget, each and every one of you, to pick up those shirts. They are available at teespring.com slash sledgehammer TV. That is our storefront. You have your choice of two t-shirts. Pick your favorite, show your loyalty, and then get it at me. Follow me on Twitter, at Nick Nightmare is the handle. Go to the Facebook.com fan page, Facebook.com slash The Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Post pictures of yourself in your gear. Get them to me. We will share them here with each and every one of you. Every single person that sends me a picture wearing my stuff will be in the two-year anniversary special coming to Sledgehammer TV August the 17th. 2018 you want to be in it all you got to do is be a subscriber follow me on twitter if you're on the tweet machine follow us on all social media platforms and get me a picture of yourself wearing my stuff that's all you got to do and you will be credited and shown in a very awesome video that i am putting together for our second year anniversary spectacular which is coming in a couple of weeks which is why this is the place to be and this is where the biggest party of the summer is taking place. And in order for you to not miss a thing, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so every single time a video just like this one pops up, you will be notified of its existence and you could get on it as soon as your wrestling heart desires. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is the hammer of reason, the hammer of reality, and the hammer of respect Thor, the wrestling god of thunder and the official sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, 
my little buddy, my most trusted companion in the whole entire world, Mr. Blue, the snowball microphone. He is the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in all the world. I don't know if I just said that twice, but if I did, it's valid because he's that important. He's that much of a champion. And if you want to see him live and in color, all you got to do is get to youtube.com slash sledge. Hammer TV. That is for all of my audio friends listening to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Radio, Spotify, and or Podbean, baby. If you are listening to the show, obviously you have no idea what the hell I was talking about at the beginning of the show as you did not see the picture that we were referencing and talking about. So if you want to do so and you want to see Thor in the flesh and you want to see blew the snowball microphone and you want to see me and you want to see the cool t-shirt designs that you need to get your hands on and you want to be part of this show all you got to do is get to sledgehammer tv on youtube.com that's enough selling it's enough selling i've been practicing all day i don't even know if i'm repeating myself because it's that time of year it's anniversary time it's coming up and i need you guys to support this show in a big way so don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you guys so much that's enough of my bullshit that is going to do it my friends and we are out of here and we will see you all week long for the absolute best coverage in professional wrestling on the planet and it goes down on the sledgehammer wrestling show right here on sledgehammer tv it's been an interesting weekend thank you guys so very very much i'm out of here and i'll see you next time